exalt you for today privilege to stand in your presence to hear what you have to teach and what you have to say to us father lord we know you will minister grace to the hearer lord speak to your people holy spirit without you there is no true church lord we want your presence to be eminent in our midst lord lead us in this fellowship as many that will come with a broken heart met every broken heart in jesus name as many that will come with any form of barrenness father lord you say there shall be no barren in the land no one among us will cast this young i stand upon the authority of your word and i say there shall be no barren in the land and none among us will cast this young in jesus name amen today brethren you are welcome to this open heart fellowship this is another wonderful opportunity to learn what god has to teach us today today this is CGF Open House Fellowship. Today is a day we train the trainer. So today is always teaching. We take the message slow so that you can understand. If I were you, in your respective home, I will advise you to take note because it's going to be very impactful what we're about to teach you. And we're going to help you to unlock secrets of overcoming all obstacles in life including those that seems insurmountable today we are looking at the topic power over all flesh power over all flesh you can have power over all flesh irrespective of their authority their rank their persuasion or their race you can have dominion over them. It is by your word the king will speak. It is by your word they will move in feet. It is by your word they will make place judgments. Such authority can rest upon you. And how do you assess such a wonderful opportunity in life? How can you have dominion over every living thing that God created? How can your authority speak for you? You can sit at home. The authority of God upon your life can make things happen in a place where you do not even know. God said we have that authority. We have that dominion. But how do we assess it? How can we come to that position or point in life <clears throat> where we shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass and cause light to shine upon our ways? Today, we are going to be taking a hint from the scripture. I'm going to be opening the scripture to show you something on how to assess such authority, how to place yourself in position for whenever you are about to speak, God already knows what you are about to speak and is ready with answer to give you. Even before the day you make your petition, like in the case of Daniel, God already heard and he sent his angels to deliver to you the results. That is the kind of life every Christian dreamt of. <clears throat> but only few Christians in life have been able to achieve such life. That's not because God has stopped blessing people or God is going to in the place of power to do these things. I was in a church where some people asked me, say, <clears throat> miracles in Jesus' days. Why is it not happening today? And the other lady even came with a bizarre word and said, I don't even believe in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I say, why? He said, because I've been baptized for many years. I know I'm a good Christian, but I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit. I said, well, after today, you ask me the question again. Before in the evening, she was speaking in tongues as if she has been speaking in tongues for the past 10 years. And she began to wonder. He said, I thought I can never speak in tongues. I said, because you have never been in a place of prayer where you have opportunity to tap from the presence of God and understand what God has in store for you. Today can be your turn. You can arrive at that position in your life where the questions you have in your heart will all be answered. Things you think can control you, when they speak, you go silence. Because when, when all your faith is in the hands of man, when man coughs, you go and hide. When they sneeze, 
you quick. That is because your life is in their hands. The Bible said they that wait upon the Lord their God shall not make haste. Even death situation can come back to life. Because God says to the children of Israel, why did you people say that your bones are dry? Your grave are covered. Then he took his servant to a valley full of dry bones. The valley of impossibility. There was no hope in the bones. The prophet himself lost hope when he saw the bones. He said, behold, they were very dried. That means there was no single atom of flesh in the bone. The bone was like a washed bone that has been researched in the lab. That was the situation of the bone. It was very dry. And he heard a voice from heaven saying to him, Son of man, can all these bones you see that are very dry, can they come back to life? He himself was so much in doubt that he said to God, he could not say yes because his faith could not carry that. Despite he has been a prophet, anointed of God for years. But what he said was, God thou knowest. Who told you God he didn't know? If he didn't know, he would not have taken you there. He know he's asking you your opinion. He's saying to you, if this bone, with this situation that you are, that your bones are dry, your hope are gone, your purpose in life is dashed to pieces, can situation be restored back? Can you have dominion over the things you fear? You are afraid to go to sleep in the night because the moment you make your bed, you make your bed to swim. Because the enemy are already waiting. They are just waiting for you to close your eyes so that they can beat the hell out of you. That is because fear has taken over a portion of your life. And the reason why you are afraid is because you know those who are against you. But have you ever bothered to know the one that stands for you? Because if you know the one that is on your side, you fear nothing. You fear nothing. It is the one that said, Judges, judgment is mine and I will pay. It is the one that sits above the circle of the earth. All the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshopper before him. That is the God you are serving. If you know the one that stands for you, you fear no one. Now, let's take a screw from the scripture. In the book of Psalm 1, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The first principle of arriving in a place of dominion, where you have power over all flesh, is one. When the God of this world come, he does not, you does not have their property in you. They did not find anything in your hand that can compromise you. When, we, when you hear the terms in the scripture, the righteous is as bold as a lion. It's easy to quote, but for the righteous to be as bold as a lion, that means his hands are pure. When the enemy comes, they have nothing to accuse him about. And that is the reason where the boldness comes from. Have you seen a debtor stand before the man is owing and is full of pride and boasts and full of confidence? All the man need to do to kill that confidence is to say, I need my money. And the confidence will go from 100 to 0. At the same time. Because as long as his money is in your hand, you are his slaves. Because a borrower is a slave to the lender. And that is the reason why so many Christians found themselves in a cave. Yes, Christ died 2,000 years ago. His blood was shed for the remission of sin. On the cross, he said, finished. That means all your problem is over. By his stripes, you will heal from whatever sickness you will have in future. By the chastisement of all your pains, we are on him. So you are not supposed to feel pain because Christ has filled your pain. 
But the reason why you still feel pain, I will tell you, that is just because you have not been able to pay up all your debts. You still owe the devil some. And as a result, any time he see confidence in you, he's coming back to pay for you to pay him his debt. The debt of sin you owe. The guilt that you still feel over that unconfessed sin. Over that hidden sins. Because the Bible says he that covereth his sin will not prosper. And as a result, fear fill your heart. You cannot have the power over flesh. That is the reason why your powers has been limited. That is the reason why when you gather together, instead of gather for power, you gather together to eat and drink. And you feast in the money, not for strength, but for weakness. But a time will come in your life when you have become a man. When you, the devil no longer threaten you. When you have put on the whole armor of God. When you can stand against the will of the devil. At that point in your life, that is when you walk in the counsel of, the, of God's people, not the ungodly. That is when you stand not in the ways of sinners. That is when your delight is in the laws of your God. And everything in it is what you meditate day and night. The Bible said, you will not need to go begging pastor to pray for you for prosperity because your will will be prosperous. You will wake up in the morning and begin to wonder where is the prosperity coming from. The Bible says, blessed is the man that fears the Lord because he shall be fed and his water shall be given him. This is a guarantee. The, in another place, he quoted, since I was born, now I have become a man. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. None of their seed ever beg for bread. And do you know what the Bible says that shocked me most? He said, the little that the righteous have is better than the abundance of many sinners. The little he has is better than the abundance of many sinners. Let's take a close look at Psalm 1 from verse 1. He said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. This man, he refused. When other people want to go and do evil, he said, No, I will not go with them. Because it's a matter of choice. Christianity is not like any other religion. It's not, I have never seen a church where they tie rope on people's neck and say, you must come to church or die. Or, you must come to our fellowship or we will burn you. Or we will destroy you. Or we will burn you to the stake. It's a matter of choice. You make the choice for yourself. You decide not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You decide not to stand in the path that leads to destruction, in the path of sinner. You decide on your own not to sit in the seat of the scoffers. You decide on your own that you are going to meditate upon the word of God. And you are going to find time, no matter your busy schedule, to meditate at least one verse day by day. The Bible says, you are looking for prosperity? <laughs> That is where prosperity is. Because the Bible says you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And you know what happened to the tree that is planted by the rivers of waters? It has its nutrients directly from the waters. It's not waiting for rain. His leaf is evergreen. And his fruits always come in their season because they have access to nutrients. The drought does not affect them. Because their root is dipped in the waters. That is what happened to you as a believer. When your root is dipped in the direct water of the Holy Spirit. And when you take your nutrient directly from the Holy Spirit, your spiritual life is evergreen. 
instead of depreciating, you appreciate. There are some Christians, they were fervent for God at the beginning. But towards the end of their life, their lights begin to go down. That is because they have not have their roots tapped into the water of the Holy Spirit. So their leaf is not ever good. But if you follow this principle, you will be like a tree. God does not select. God does not say because I like A more than B. So because of that, A, I adore you with this spirit. B, you are left in the cold. No. God said any man that does these things, his leaf will be evergreen. His fruit will come at the right time. You don't need to beg for fruits. You don't need to panic for souls. The God that called you is faithful. I was speaking to a pastor friend last week and I explained to him that God is faithful. That God will not send you on an error without backing you up. If he sends you, he will go with you. Because it's, first he will make his word real in your mouth. Two, he's going to confirm every word that comes out from your mouth with signs and wonder following it. Since I've been with God for the past 20 years, I have never said anything from my mouth under the power of the Holy Spirit. That has not come to pass. Because I knew fully well that when God says it, it will bring it to pass. It may take time, but it will surely come to pass. His word cannot lie. That's why he said to you, write the vision. When God says a thing to me, I take pen and I write it down. Because I know in the course of time it will surely come to pass. I don't care how many years, but I know it will come to pass. Because when it comes to pass, I will know fully where I will stroke it. I will say, God said this thing so so and so did. Now it has been fulfilled. That's why some people doubt without proof. God is saying one thing to you. Prove me. Out of all religions, all histories, all theology, it is only God and the Bible I see the word prove me. Test all things. And hold on to that which is true. If somebody is writing to you a lie, will not tell you to test it. He will tell you, just believe me. I know I'm telling you the truth. But God is the only one that is saying to you, don't believe what I say. Go and try it. If it don't work, don't believe it. So the same thing we should do as minister. When you somebody comes to your church and is standing in the congregation and he's about to say a thing, tell him, hold on first. Go and try it. If it doesn't work, come back. Then you can accuse the church. But don't accuse the church brandly without testing it. Follow this principle. If it doesn't work for you, then accuse me of being a false prophet and I will wear it with a badge of honor. But I know the God whom I serve continuously is more than able to fulfill in his word. Because God inhabits his word. And the Bible told me he honored his word more than his name. The Bible says God gave him a name that is above all names. At the name of Christ, Jesus, every name must bow. Till tomorrow, whenever that name is mentioned, they must still bow. Power still bow. Men, mighty men of valors, they bow at the name of Jesus. That is because that name has been highly exalted. So if you don't prove it, you don't see the action. The name is there. But now God is telling you even that name that has been proven, that demons obey, that set and bow before, that at the measure of that name means bow, that he honor this word of God 
more than that name. And the word of God is the source of your power as a believer. Now, let's go to the book of John, chapter 17, from verse 1 to 5. John 17, from verse 1, I read. And Jesus' word sparked. This was spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also might be glorified in thee. But what follows is what I am concerned about in verse 2. He says, And thou hast given him power, given me power, over all flesh that we should give eternal life to as many as that has given us not only has god given us power over all flesh but he has also given us the word of eternal life to give eternal life that authority is in us Today, when you tell Christian that Christ's second is return is coming, the whole church is silent. Because they don't want their lords to come. Because if they were a good servant, they would want their master to return. But because you are not a trustworthy servant, you are afraid of your master. A faithful servant is happy when his master is coming home. Just like a good child is happy when his father showed up. Because he knew he would get praise of his father. But an evil child will not celebrate his father's return. Because he knows he will get criticism from the same father. That is exactly how many Christians feel about God. But God is saying to you, you have power over all flesh. Power over all powers. There is one secret I want to get you into today. God has given us dominion over the earth and over anything that comes into the world. Why do we see Christians moving from tripod to post, looking for who will kill demon for them, who will break some ancestral ties, some family ties, when God has given you authority? The Bible tells you, can the captive of the mighty be delivered? Can the prey of the terrible be taken away? The Bible said to you, the captive of the mighty will be delivered. Even the prey of the terrible and even the lawful captive will be delivered. The prey of the terrible will be taken away. You know why? God is contending on your behalf. And he's given those that seek for your flesh, their own flesh to eat. And those that want your blood will drink their blood. As it were, sweet wine. And yet, Christians are afraid to go to bed in the night. Because once more we threaten them. I know of, I was one returning to Lagos. The Lord led me, led me to stop in one house just to relax and sleep for the night before I make it because the time was fast spent and all the bus has closed. I was frustrated and tired, not knowing that God was deliberately keeping me away from traveling that day because of something that was happening in the house. Because sometimes in Christianity, we blame God because we don't see anything. And God allows us certain things to happen so that his name can be glorified. And I stopped in the house. I saw one small leaf tied on the door. <laughs> and I asked the man, why? He said, they told him if he remove this thing, he's going to die tonight. That the witch has already finished eating him. I said to him, there is only one problem. I cannot cross under this thing and enter this house. We have to burn it. I took fire. We burn it. And I went into the house. He was expecting me to 
call the family together and lay hand on him so that the witches will not eat him that night. After burning it, I sat down and I said, Do you have food? They brought food and I ate. And I sit down to rest. And I did not pray. And the man was already as white as snow because he has not died, died but the fear of death has killed him already. So when the fear was subsided in the night, I called them together and said, let us pray. And after prayer, we went to bed. He woke me up by 2 a.m. and said, today I know there is God. Because God took care of the battle he was afraid of. And he said, I saw a revelation. Truly what the Jewish daughter told me was true. They have shared all my meat. But as they were about to eat it, a man came. And he took the meat from their hand. And he assembled it together. And he told me to go home. He said, as I was going, I was praising God. Because one thing, fear is the fastest killer in Christian life. That's why in the Bible there are 365 fear knots. Each one is sufficient for one day. God expects Christian to live a life free from fear. But when people put their life in the hands of fear, they die before even the devil killed them. Sometimes it's not even the devil that is killing people. They kill themselves. Because the threats of what the devil would do to them, they are so perplexed. Just like when you are in Ocot. When, they st when you tell them I want to leave, they tell you this is the kind of terrible death you will die. As if there is anybody on earth that will live and not taste death. And because they tell you that, you are afraid to leave them. Even when you know fully where this association is terrible, there is nothing good to get from it. Because of the fear of death, you remain captivity. Staying in captivity is more than the fear of death. But because of fear of death, you subject your life to perpetual bondage. And at the end of the day, the devil will still take this life. But that is after he has wiped out everything that belongs to you. And that is one of the key. Because the Bible says anyone that want to, that is afraid of losing his life will lose it. But if you lose your life willingly, you will get it. Until you are ready to lose your life, you can never gain it. But if you are not ready to lose it, what if that man has told me, don't cut that rope? That night, they would have eaten him. And that rope would not have stopped anything. And nobody would have come to his rescue. He would have been resting in his grave by today. But God came to his rescue. Despite his fear, he decided to put the flesh aside and listen to the voice of God. And because he listened to the voice of God, he was feared. And that is exactly the message I have for you today. Christian, we have power over the flesh. Oh, I don't know, I can't control myself. Anytime I see a beautiful woman, I want to piss on my pants. You have power to control the flesh. You have power to control your zeal. You have power to control your lusts. You have power to control your mind. There is nothing you set your mind upon that is impossible. God has given that to us. God has given it to man. There is only one thing that God will not do for us. Ability to say no. No matter how holy you are, you must face temptation. What preserves your Christian faith is your ability to say no when you mean no. And to say yes when you mean yes. That is what makes you a Christian. 
God is not asking you to do another thing or things that are hard or things that are difficult but be able to look at somebody in the face and say sorry I can't do this despite the persuasion despite your needs put your selfish interest aside hunger will not kill you in five minutes boil your food if he saw have just come back from the farm despite his hunger he had decided to put some yam in the fire and roast it he would not have sold his bed right but because he cried out for linter protege saying i faint today many christians because of five minutes pressure they lost their glory they lost their faith they lost the authority of god in their life their name is plastered all over the press because five minutes time in hellfire with the devil and the devil take advantage of your christian life all because he pressurized you you could not just hold yourself take clue from christ christ suffered like you the bible said i'll be guided in resistance against sin the sweat and the tears coming from him was thick as blood have you ever strived in your resistance of sin to the extent of the sweat of blood or the tears of blood for prayer to resist sin then if you have come to that point in your life that is when you knew you have done what Christ did. He stand his ground. He didn't give in. He didn't take the easy way out. He knew the cross was hard. He knew it was difficult. There was another way of avoiding the cross. Avoiding death altogether. He doesn't need to die. What was the easy way? Just bow to the devil. Everything he came from heaven to get, he will get it. Just kneel down and say, Devil, I submit under your authority. The devil will give him the whole world. That was the easy way out. But he never chose it. That should we should learn from that as believer. A servant is not greater than his master. If Christ did not take the easy way out, believers should not take the easy way out. So many Christians, ah, oh, I have accepted salvation. That is enough. Now let me live my life. I can sleep with whoever I like. I can do whatever I want to do. After all, I'll be saved. Once saved, and forever saved. Congratulations. Have you forgot the foolish virgin? The only mistake they make was not that they were not having garments. They were having garments as other virgins. They were having long past all that virgin. That means they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They have the fruits. But something was missing. They forgot to add extra oil. Because they don't, forgot that the master would delay. You have need of patience. Add patience to your Christian virtue. If not, when the master delay, you are going to run off. You are going to stain your Christian garments with the lust of the flesh, with the pressure of this world, the lust of the eyes, the deceitfulness of riches. And at the end of the day, when the bridegroom come, the door will be shut and you'll be left outside. God is saying the same thing to you here. And he's saying clearly in verse 1 that in verse 2, that thou has given us power over all flesh. God has given us power over all flesh. So stop telling me it's just the flesh. I could not control it. God has given you power over the flesh. Power to control the witches. Power to control the demons. Power to control yourself. You have it. And he said that ye should give eternal life to as many 
as thou has given, as God has given you. You have the power to give eternal life to as many that God has put under your care. Take the oversight. Learn from Paul. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Because I am marching to heaven. If you follow my footstep, you will get there. But if your footsteps are crooked, you cannot tell somebody, follow me as I follow Christ. Because you know, obviously, you are not. Verse 3, he made something clear to us there. He said, this is what is eternal life. This is eternal life. That you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That is eternal life. That your knowledge of God should be supreme above all things. That thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might, and with all your being. And you must fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And what is his commandment? That you should love your neighbor as you yourself. He never gave you so many commandments like Moses. He always says, love one another, even as I have loved you. The only way people will know you are a disciple of Christ, if the love of Christ is found in you, people will see Christ in you. While you are going through this world of sin, your life is just a book. Why you at why you think you are following God? Other people are reading you. They are reading you like a book, and they are asking themselves simple question: Does this my life, if we follow His footstep, does it point us to heaven? Does His step point us to the right way? Is it living the life that God has left? Do I see Jesus in Him? This is the question they ask. And if your question, if your answer is yes, other will want to join you. That's why Jesus said in the book of John that if you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear fruit and your fruit will remain. That means if you follow my footstep as I did, you do it the way I do it. There is nothing stopping people from coming to your church. There is nothing stopping people from turning to God through you. They will want to know the same God you know. I was in a place for mission. When I finished, the man was proud to be a secret court man. He put the sandboard on the wall and he put the picture and he said to me, I'm very proud to belong to these confraternities. But when I finished teaching in that place, I was about to leave. The man looked at me and said, my son, if you have a church, I would have gone to church. Because let others see Jesus in you. Amen. And I look at him and I say, Daddy, there is a church in front of your house. Why are you telling me if I have a church, you would have gone to church? When you have a church in front of your house, why didn't you go there? He said, that is not a church, my son. Because you think, because they are not educated, they don't know you. You think because they don't speak big grammar. They don't know what the Bible said. The unbeliever will be your judge. While you go through this world, you are a mirror to them. Your conduct matter. Your attitude matters. The life you live outside the church matters. It's not when you are going to church you dress like Holy Mary. But outside the church, you are a viper. They know who you are. And they see you. They are in your streets. They are in your family. They are in your marriage. They are looking at you. Every day, how you take care of your children. And you come back to them and say, I'm pastor, so, so, and so. When Christians start introducing themselves, you know there is something wrong with their Christian life. You don't need... To introduce yourself. People are going to seek God in you. That's why Jesus said when you get to feast. Don't promote yourself. Don't go from the beginning to the high table. 
Sit in the lower chamber. Let somebody come and attend to you. Let it take you by hand and say, Sir, this place is not fit for you. Come and sit up here. But when you promote yourself, when somebody more important than you come, they are going to take it from up down. So it's better to go from down to up than to go from up to down. So many of us got call us. We want to start from 20,000 members. God, give me 20,000 members. If not, I will not serve him. God will say, sit down. I have better people in the feet. Start with one. Take care of other people's sheep. If you cannot take care of that which is another, God will not give you your own. God grade your faithfulness. He is not a man. You cannot bribe him. You can't do eye service with God. He knows you better than you know yourself. You cannot put him in a test tube. You cannot roll test and analysis on him. He knows you. Now, in verse 3, something here he said, this is eternal life, that you know the only true God. As believer, our eternal life is to have the complete knowledge of God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. If we have this full knowledge, eternal life is already imprinted in us. Make no doubt. It's not because of your righteousness or any good thing you have done. You already have eternal life. But the soul that sin it shall die. That was the question the Pharisees asked Jesus. We are children of Abraham. Why will you say thou shall be made free? We have never been in bondage. You have eternal life. Why do you still need to keep the laws? Why do you still need to obey the voice of God and to do what is right in his sight? After all, you are already saved. You have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have been baptized. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that is enough to get to heaven. But something you fail to understand was the same answer Jesus gave to the Pharisees. Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave cannot stay in the house forever. But the son does. Therefore, it is only the son that has the right of freedom. Not the servant. You free yourself from the devil when you came to Christ. But if you go back to the devil and say, give me that rope, I like it. You put it on your neck. Will it drive you away from captivity? You remain in captivity to the end. That is what makes Christians remain in captivity. That's why Christians are possessed. I have driven out demons from Christians. Pray, do healing from them. And these are people who are supposed to minister healing. Now they are coming to you to be healed. Do what, from whom does the people of the earth take their tithes? Is it supposed to be from some? No. It's supposed to be from the servant. But now, the sons need to pay their tithes. Do you know why? Because the sons have stained themselves with the word. The sons are supposed to minister healing, minister deliverance, open the eyes of the blind, preach deliverance and liberty to the captive, set the band free, raise up the dead. That is our authority as children of God. But when we deviate from our authority, we lose our inheritance. Because sin brings death. That's why God told you the only salary you can get from sin is death itself. You cannot get any other thing from sin except death. But the gift that God has given you brings life everlasting. And this gift is in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
that you should believe in the Lord God Almighty and Jesus Christ, who He has sent. That is where your eternal life is hidden. He didn't tell you until you go to church or you, you become religious and do religious activity. No. This is the key to having eternal life. Now, in verse 4, he said, I have glorified thee on earth and I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. How many of us can go to God on the last day and say, God, the work you gave me on earth, I finish it. Like Jesus, like Paul. Paul said, I have fought a good fight of faith. I have laid hold on eternal life. I have finished the race. And I know the crown of glory, which the Lord shall give those who love his appearance, are with me. And having done all that, he said, neither do I consider myself to have apprehended. I do not consider myself to have arrived, but I put my body under. I discipline my own body. Every day, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. Every day, you bring yourself under control. Put yourself on exam. Not after I have preached to others, I myself will be a castaway. God expects us to examine ourselves. What about the sons of Rechabites? They listen to their father. Their father told them not to drink wine, not to dwell in house, but to live in booths because they are foreigners and pilgrims in the earth. But what did they do? They obeyed their father. The sons of Rechabites obeyed their father. A prophet from God said, this is the word of God. Come to the house of God, drink wine and eat. You know what he said? He said, no. Our father told us not to drink wine. Not God. Our father told us not to drink wine. But he's a prophet of God. They were ready to disobey the prophet of God, to obey their father. And because of God, that, God said, the Rechabite will never lack a man to stand before God the days of their life. God reward obedience. God did not punish them because they obeyed their father. Rather, God rewarded them. And God is expecting the same from believers. If the Rechabites could listen to their father, why can't Christians listen to God? Why can't Christians stand under the same faith as God and say, we will do everything he says and all that he has commanded us, we will obey and see if you will not prosper. See if you will not increase. Right, instead of doing that, we are looking for pastor who will give one million that will multiply it. I'm telling you one bad news today. Nobody can multiply the money. If you want multiplication, go to the devil. God does not multiply money. The only people that multiply money for you is the devil. If you want blessing from God, cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. Because God himself, he does not need what you have to bless you. His blessing make rich. It does not come with sorrow. Now, let's turn our Bible to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 18 from verse 2 to 4. What did he say? The city, in a city there was a judge which feared not God, neither does he even regard the personality of man. And there was a widow in that same city. And that widow came to this judge every day and cried, Please avenge me. The enemy has come to take away the only land my husband left for me. Please avenge me. Help me recover this land back so that I and my sons will not die of hunger. So that with my farm, the Bible says this judge does not answer the woman a word. After all, he doesn't have any reason to help her. He doesn't fear God. He doesn't fear man. So man cannot do anything to him. Neither can he, does he fear God. So he has no reason to help the woman. But one day, he sat down. And he said to himself, in verse 4, 
He said, why, why he would not for a while afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor do I regard man. In verse 5, yet because this widow troubles me, every day is coming here to cry in my ear. This cry is disturbing my ear. I cannot longer bear it. I know I don't fear God. And I know I don't fear any human being or have respect for them. But because of this crowd, this widow, that is disturbing me every day, he said, I will avenge her. And let by her continual coming, she make people feel that I'm weak. I am not weak. I don't want people to feel I'm weak. So because of that, I'm going to avenge this widow. And the Bible is saying to you, hear what this unjust judge said. In verse 7, shall not God avenge his own elect? We cry to him day and night. O oh, men of little faith, tarry. Don't just need her. Stay on your knees. Don't just pray. Tarry in prayer. I fast into it. Fast until God speak. I remember when I was in Germany. After I asked God for something, and he did not, he refused to answer. And I finished 30 days. Then I said, God, now the fasting is no longer for days until you hear me. And the third day he came with the Bible. And we sat down and discussed. But if I have not continued, I would not have met him. Because he is waiting to see if you will give up. He is going to be here with you. To see how much you need that thing. He is not like the devil. That will give you that which you cannot control so that you can come back to him. But God will want to see faithfully how much you need it. You need a wife? Let's see how much you need a wife. You need children? Let's see how much you need children. Like Hannah. She knew desperately she needed children. When the husband gave her food and passion, she refused to eat. She bowed her face to the ground and tarried and said, God, I don't want a child so that people will call me mama. No, if you give me a child, I will bring it back to you. All I want to prove to my mate is that I'm not barren. To show to my mate that there is no barren in the land. Just give me a charge. If that charge come, when the charge come of age, I will return the charge to you. And today, that woman has three sons. What is the name of her three sons? Do you know it? No. <clears throat> Anna presented one son to God. The name of Samuel is known throughout Israel. See, tomorrow people still read about Samuel. The Bible says the sons of the barren women shall be more than the sons of the married wife. Because when God gives you his own, one from God is better than millions from the devil. That is one secret many Christians need to know about. Now, let's take our last verse from the book of Matthew. Chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew 19, 26. And Jesus said, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, all these things we've been talking about is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And he said, If you have faith as a grain, of rice, and you say to this mountain, be removed, throw yourself into the sea, it will listen to you. Speak to the mountain in your life. The authority to control all things, nature, has been given to you. I remember when we went for mission, the rain wanted to spoil everything we came to do. When the villager could not bear our presence, they decided to cause rain. And the breeze was so much that it was taking speaker. And 
The member said, can't we postpone this program? I said, not today. The program will hold. I said, let's go. As we were stepping out of house, rain was showering. But immediately we start preaching in the crusade ground, rain dried up. And I told the members, the rain will fall in his own time. Because I'm also a servant of God just like he is. But when I finish my message, the rain cannot start preaching itself. And when we finished message, we got home in the night. The rain fell. Because the rain is not stopped. Will not be stopped from falling. Because the farmer needs it to plant their crop. But they will not disturb the work God sent you. The sun will not disturb it. Nobody is stopping the witches from flying. That is their business. But as long as they do not disturb your activities, let them fly. Nobody is stopping the marine from doing whatever they like. But as long as they don't come to your program to cause trouble, that is where they have problem. Because whatever belongs to you, the enemy cannot desire it. Because what God has given to you is your own and is sacred. And any evil power that desire it, that is the end of the person. Because God has given you authority over them. To give the flesh eater their own flesh to eat. And the blood drinker to drink their blood as to a sweet wine. The Lord has given you authority. Not only to pursue and overtake your enemy. But never to turn until they were destroyed. You have authority. What does the Bible says about the saints? It says, let the saints who are sanctified sing with joy. Even on top of their bed. And let the high praise of God fill their mouth. He didn't say let them begin to curse their enemy. He didn't say let them begin to pray for the death of their friends and their grandfather. Because any old man in Africa is a witch. So that is not what God is telling you to do. What he's telling you to do. He says you sing with joy on top of your bed. The high praise of our God should fill your mouth. With the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit upon your hands, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind all the kings of this earth with chains, and their rulers with fatters of iron. We the saints have this honor. But how many of us care to use it? The Lord has given you authority to bind king at your will. To command nation, a nation you have not known, they will hear your voice and they will listen to you. King will bow out of their close places and they will cry to you and say, what shall we do? Look at Daniel. Kings came to consult. I never remember Daniel writing an application. Do you know why? Because his talent was sought after. Because if God announces you, it's better than when you go to TV. When God is the one who is doing the announcement, men will hear. Nations will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising up. Sons of aliens, they will be your workers in your feet. Because why? The Lord has anointed you. So people will say, the reason why I didn't go far is because of my color. I have seen ministers who have the same color as you are, who has gone around the world because God was with them. If God is with you, nothing shall be impossible. The Bible said, What are you, O great Martin, before Zerubbabel and I serve? You shall become a play. Martins will run themselves out of your ways, nations will come and bow at your feet. Kings will come to listen to your work. When you get to a church and you start begging, Pastor, can I preach in your church next Sunday, please? That is because you don't have anything to say. When you have something to say, you say, I'm preaching on Sunday. The pastor will say, I'm very happy to have you. Because you have something. There is a voice of God in you that when people listen, I went to a church where they gave me five minutes to exhort. After five minutes, the people say, please, can you continue? I said, no, you gave me five minutes. Five minutes is enough. 
You don't need the whole house. Whatever time God gave you is enough. If God, the Bible said the spirit of a prophet is subject to a prophet. If God gave you five minutes, channel the Holy Spirit towards five minutes. The Holy Spirit will pass his message in five minutes. If he give you 30 minutes, channel the Holy Spirit towards 30 minutes. Don't bother yourself. Time the Holy Spirit to the time you are given and you will have maximum results. Don't care how he's going to do it. It is his message and his word. He know how to preach it better than you do. Brethren, this is where we're going to end today. And I want you to take this word to heart. Before we conclude in prayer, if you have any problem that is disturbing you, just put your hand in that place and begin to decree right now. Cast your mind. Surrender that problem to the hands of God. Cast your mind into the hands of God. And the Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall come to pass, and light will shine upon the west. But today you are going to decree that whatever problem that is disturbing you, be it known or unknown, that they're going to take their bag and get out of your life for good. And from today, they are going to trouble you no more. Because the Bible says affliction will not rise the second time. And today, that affliction in your life that have risen many times, that uncontrollable sin that you have not been able to do without, today mark the end of it. Today, the roots will be cut off. Because the Bible said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive in his train, and he gave gifts to man. You have the gift of God. The gift to overcome the flesh is in you. Because Christ has ascended. Oh, he that ascended is the same one that descended. That he may feel all things in all. Christ has ascended for your sake. Now begin to speak to that sickness. Begin to speak to that shame. Begin to speak to that infirmity. Begin to speak to that money that the enemies are holding. Begin to speak to it right now. And ask them to release it with a majesty effect because the bible says whatever belongs to you the devil will not desire it the lord is the lord there is none else beside him there is none in heaven that can be compared to him there is none on earth not under the earth none in the covo none in the sea that can be compared to him oh lord Release your people in the name of God the Father. I release your people in the name of God the Son. I release your people in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, because it is done. Thank you because it is done. Brethren, I want you to join us tomorrow for another exciting day where we'll have opportunity to study the Word of God together in our fellowship. Our fellowship time is a contribution time. You can send us message through our message box. Just send out your contribution. Any question you have or testimony, um, information are there. You can write us. Let us hear from you. God bless you. If you have, if there is any question or doubt you have, anything you want us to correct in the message, please let us know. The Bible says, "Iron sharpened iron." So does the man sharpen the countenance of his brother. We want to learn from you, just as you learn from us. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, we'll be happy to have you by tomorrow again as we learn from each other.